All right, greetings and salutations. It's your boy D Boom. We back. Uh, new weeks, new readings. Gonna keep this brisk. Uh, Mad work, but uh, Shorty's in here, and I got at least a good hour to make use of some some time while I'm waiting. So let me see what we got. So twin flame separation. Let me shuffle these up. Extra good. Uh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Right. Let me begin. Head. That's swords. Thoughts, decisions, mentality, ideology, the direction you're going. Everything starts in the mind. Then you got cups. Those are swords. Then you got cups. Feelings and emotions. All feelings and emotions are, are just indicators on where you're going mentally. Hard mind must be aligned with everything that you do. Uh, we also got all red cards in the divine feminine role. That's definitely a warning or a trigger or just something to look out for. Could be something good too. We'll see in just a second. Um, yeah, all feelings and emotions, cups are, are just indicators of where you're going mentally. Heart and mind must be aligned with everything you do. And we got wants. These are actions, behavior, anything you're doing or anything you've done. Not what you finna do because you ain't did it yet. You know what I mean, what you've done got karma and accountability attached to it. What you're doing got karma and accountability attached to it. What you finna do don't mean nothing. This is all you can go off of with anybody or anything. Actions and behavior. And we got pinnacles. <clears throat> pinnacles are persons, places, and things. Uh, these things you can taste, touch, see, feel, and hear. All pinnacles expire. All pinnacles have expiration dates, and all pinnacles are temporary. Pinnacles are also a pinnacle. P i n n a c l e, like a place, uh, a point, a moment, an era, in time. Once again, temporary. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't stay hovered. So I'm gonna keep my profile low. I don't want no kids seeing me in here. They sleep right now. <clears throat> so, separation reading. First card is message. This involves both masculine and feminine. We got the nine of swords. This is stress. This is losing sleep, losing teeth, losing hair, losing weight, gaining weight the wrong way. You know, stress is something you put on you. It's mental too. Stress is something you put on you, like steak on your. I mean, sauce on your steak, salt on your fries, ketchup on your fries, cheese on your taco. Like, you can eat your fries as is, your taco as is. You can eat your steak dry as a mofo. You know what I mean? You don't have to put add-ons on anything, just like you don't have to add on stress to your mental. Because the step after stress is the ten of swords, which is death or a permanent ending. You know what I'm saying? Stress kills because the next step after stress is the tennis sport so don't let your stress which is mental create disease in your body and disease is just dis-ease in the mind how this re reflects to the feminine feminine is stressing over three of pentacles three of pentacles is a bridge this is you this is somebody else and this is stuff y'all supposed to be doing one main question i get with a lot of my clients is this is the divine feminine what am i supposed to be doing with my divine masculine or how do i get my divine masculine to do something with me or to build with me or to join me you know what i mean like it's really just finding that common denominator to really bring your masculine in or find a common denominator for you to line yourself up with whatever your masculine is building but it's about building two people building two people doing something two people manifesting something two people at a milestone or two people at a certain point or two people at a pinnacle like you just want to do something with your mask and you kind of stressed out on how you could do that or like in my case one thing that stressed me out about my mask the most is you know, are we gonna build like same energy are we really gonna build like he's in my cipher i'm in his cipher you know we close like two pentacles and shit, but I mean, man, him be and him has to, we gotta start doing some shit. Cause we ain't really doing too much together on a purpose, divine based thing. Me, we do a lot of worldly physical shit together, you know what I'm saying? Like go out, hang out, chop it up. But as far as doing shit with meaning or with purpose, I'm kinda not stressing over that, but that's one of my many mental aches. So, um, what the masculine is stressing about is two of swords, options, or lack thereof. 
Nine of Swords plus Two of Swords equals the Knight of Swords, which is actually the bottom line. So we can just go straight to the bottom line with this. You know, this is this. So not only is Masculine stressed mentally about the options that he has left, if he has any options left, or if there is any option to get him either out of a certain situation or to move forward in a certain situation. He's basically resonating in a re resonant, oh my God, resonation of fear. Fear is the bottom line. This is the most important thing in this message, fear. Feminine. While you stressing over how to build with your masculine, as time progresses, it's going to turn from stress to fear. You fear you will never be able to do this. You fear that you two would never find a combinator or be on one accord. You know what I'm saying? But as far as the masculine is concerned, it's like, it's all about option. But to get it, masculine, I'm going to get specific. I don't want to just super guess. So, first of all, how does fear, because it involves both masculine and feminine. And the Knight of Swords is just, Making decisions without crossing your T's and dying your eyes, being mentally discombobulated from the Ten of Swords, which is the car prior to this. So death, like Ten of Swords would be a death. It's a lot of death around you. A lot of people are dropping dead. It's got you scared. Damn, am I next? A lot of people are getting cancer in your area. You're wondering, damn, am I next? Like it's fear is a normal energy, but it's an energy you don't stay in. Like stress. Stress is a normal energy, but it's not an energy you stay in. Now. When it comes to fear in general, the divine feminine it has nothing to fear. Like on a one to ten level of fear, right now, feminine is at a six of pentacles. That's a D. That's there's like I ain't saying ain't no fear in your feminine's heart, but fear ain't none fear ain't your feminine's obstacle. It ain't your feminine's problem. A motherfucker with a lot of fear is the divine masculine. Why feminine, in fact, is fearless. An energy divine masculine, you should take a note or two from. Now, okay. All right. Masculine. <clears throat> How this fear deals with you is the Three of Swords pain. Three of Swords is physical pain, mental pain, trauma, you know, hurt. From the past, hurt from the present, or hurt from an uncertain future. You know, fear and pain goes hand in hand with you, divine masculine. Sword, sword, it's all in your head at the end of the day. You know, divine masculine's most worst fear is that whatever you two got going on, or whatever you two got going, is not gonna last. Divine masculine's biggest fear, which really turns into a reality for your divine masculine, you might be scared. So afraid to lose you. Like you're just gonna walk away. That's why he pushes you away to kind of get himself ready for you leaving anyway. You know that saying, if you love him, let him go, that's a pure masculine mentality. To push away the person you love the most, only to let fate decide if they gonna come back. It's like one of my favorite shows I've been been watch binge watching lately, uh The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. That's my shit. <laughs> I learned to watch that like I wouldn't say for two straight weeks, you know what I'm saying? Like, finish the whole show, start it back from square one. It's usually what I do with some of my favorite shows. But one thing I could take from Kimmy Smith uh, is that you got to be unbreakable. Your faith got to be unshakable. You know what I mean? She rolls with the punches. Anything bad that happens, she finds good out of it. But everybody else, like, collapses around her. But the energy that I was... Kind of saying was like, you know, why feminines are like Kimmy Schmidt. You know, masculines are a lot like Titus. That's the gay guy from, uh, the black gay guy from uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Now, and Titus is the black gay guy. His boyfriend, he met this uh, Italian construction worker or whatever. But the Italian construction worker basically came out for Titus. This is his. Titus' boyfriend. Titus been out, been gay, been proud for a while. His boyfriend, you know what I mean, is just a newbie. You know, he came out to his parents with Titus, and a lot of his first gay experiences 
with Titus. But once Titus seen that, you know, God, like, you're just a baby. This is really your first relationship. Like, I don't want your first relationship to, like, not work out, especially not with me. So, basically, Titus pieced him out to go find himself, to go have fuck-ass relationships, you know what I'm saying, to get her to learn so if he come back and, you know, Titus didn't have a peace of mind. Titus just didn't want to be the one to hurt. You know, Titus didn't want to be the one. And Titus is a masculine too. Titus didn't want to be the one to kind of break his heart to kind of turn him off from the whole LGBT thing. So I just thought that was kind of funny. Titus didn't want to kick, I forgot his boyfriend's name, to the curb, but he had to. You know what I mean? They ended up finding each other frequent, but being more than friends before anything else. So even though they weren't boyfriends anymore, they still were best friends, but they didn't become best friends until after their pre-relationship, if you get my trip. So masculines definitely will push you away to see if you come back, because in his head, it's meant. If you can put up with what I just put you through and still forgive me and come back, then it's like, you know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. And you can still, like, then it's men. So that's what the Madison's are. You know what I'm saying? Um, Madison's been hurt. So bad that he can't trust the soul. So bad he can't even trust you. I mean, as the white feminists find out, you give your masculine number one conditional love. You're your masculine's number one fan. You support everything that your masculine does. You don't, you don't try to control your masculine. You allow him to do whatever he wants to do and be whoever he wants to be. You don't put restrictions or try to change the guy. Nah, the world does that shit. You do none of that. You feel what I'm saying? And even though you give him unconditional love, even though you give him all the space that he needs, even though you kind of play by his rules, it's almost like it ain't never enough. But take this with you. If he do you like that, you ask him. If he does the person that loves him the most, the person that has his best interests at heart, the person that loves him unconditionally the most, if he pushes you away, imagine who else he do like pushing away. Could be friends, could be family, could be partners, networks. Like I say, if you get pushed to the curb, just imagine how he does his own family. Or how he'll do a friend. But he keeps coming back to you, right? Alright. That's a luxury that some family members don't get. That's some luxuries that some friends that he's no longer than you won't get. He'll keep coming back to you, but he ain't gonna come back to no one else like that. Or in that manner, in that fashion. Because the master can trust you. You're trustworthy. Divine feminine, you are genuine. Unless you're not trustworthy. Unless you're not genuine. Unless you are fake as shit. Unless you are fucking up in your masculine's eye. Then that's just another story. Then they piece themselves out or separating themselves from you for you to get your stuff together. Eat potatoes. First card in this message. Feminine. You got the ten of pentacles. This is manifestation. You know what I'm saying? This is something you want to manifest, being manifested. Uh, more smoke. Seven of Wands, eternal conflict. Now, it's something that you manifested. That now that it's manifested, you kind of have a second thoughts about it. You know, seven of Wands is internal conflict. Like I said, you can get what you want, but once you get it, you got to deal with it. Yeah. yeah. You got the blue keys. Nah, it should be sitting next to my keys, probably by the door. Um, yeah, internal conflict. We all got complexes. We all got woes. We all got problems. We all got drama. And that shit is a side that we have to deal with ourselves to heal ourselves. Because it ain't nobody else's job to fix you. You fix yourself. If your heart was outside your chest, it'd be somebody else's job to fix you. But since it's inside your chest... That's all you, boo-boo. You got a disease that you have to cure yourself from. Cure yourself from. Like, the doctors, they ain't meant to cure. Just like churches ain't meant to save no more. Church is a business. It's all about money. Uh, healthcare is a business. It's all about money. Nobody keep you sick and make more money than cure you and don't get your money. Anymore. It's a different world. You know, so you got to fix yourself. But, yeah, this seemed like you manifested something that you wanted. Could have been a relationship. Could have been a goal that you wanted to, to do. Maybe something off your bucket list. Maybe something you wanted to experience. Whatever it is, you feel another way about it. You know, it's like, it's an example I can use.
can't think of nothing I manifested that I didn't want. Oh. I remember I asked for a wife one time in uh, college. I was like 21. Prayed. God send me, you know, send me my wife. You know what I'm saying? Send me the one. You know what I mean? I know she around. I'll be looking for her. Thank you. It's like LL Cool J at the end of love and shit. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, baby, if you go out there and make yourself know, like, I will find you. <laughs> like, for real. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, Shorty popped up two months later. Of course, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? Flaked out. Created a whole monster in the process. Like I say, be careful what you ask for. I thought I was waiting. I thought I was ready for a wife until she can. And God does answer your prayer. That's how you know you're real. God sat there and I just wasn't ready. Wasted like three, four years of her life. I ain't breaking hard or nothing. You know what I'm saying? But I just. I mean. Uh, put stuff back. Uh, I think I need to drop for about an hour unless all that shit in your way. If it's in your way, then um. Yeah, Um, I think she gonna probably mop it again. You can put it on there. Um, but if you track and stuff, like if you see it like tracking, tracking, then just freeze. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to mess it up worse. But uh, it should take literally about an hour. But just do you. You know what I'm saying? Um. I don't think it should be a problem. Like I said, I probably know she's going to do it again. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm still fucked. So, um, yeah, just a little internal conflict. You manifested something for me. You wasn't ready for it. Could be in a relationship. Well, fuck okay, it. There's some flame thing ain't going to work. Let me have something in the meantime. It happens. But it's like you ain't got time, energy, or resources for it. Dig what I'm saying? It's just like, careful what you ask for. Or be careful what you manifest. It's like a kid at Christmas. Yeah, I see my little brother do it all the time. He's spoiled. You know what I'm saying? You got a dad and mom. So he had more options. He could give more shit. His birthday is way more fire. I was a twin too, so I literally shared everything with my twin sister as a kid coming up. Never had my own shit. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, my twin sister, we'll have our birthday at like the park. It'll be a barbecue, go to all these, get chips, and ice cream, hot dogs, and shit. That was our birthday every year because it wasn't just our birthday. I had a cousin, Tierra, cousin Michelle, my auntie Beauty. It was and my cousin DeAsia. It's like five other women in my family shared the same birthday as me. And we all Leo, so we all had a birthday at the same time. Never went to Chuck E. T's, never went to Discovery Zone, Jumping Jacks, Carfield, you know. Brother, he had a shit in Six Flags. Game room, Hooters, it's just him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, uh, I'm trying to see the point that I was getting to. Yeah, just just be careful what you wish for. You know what I mean? Because you just might get it. And then once you get it, you don't know if you really want it until you have it. That's why you learn by doing it. You know what I mean? And you learn by the things you manifest. So... You don't really know what you want until you get it. Even when you get it, it might not be for you. Or you might not like it. Like my little brother, he'll always get toys. Mom, I want this. I want this. I want this for my birthday. So the guy, he'll play play with it on his birthday. Two weeks later, that shit's sitting in the, in, the, in the box with the other toys. This nigga switched toys like clothes. Any toy I had, I appreciated because, you know what I'm saying, me getting a toy from anybody was cool. Like I say, a lot of people forget about your boy. I was a middle child and a twin, so a lot of people forgot. So, then if I did ask directly for a president, I probably couldn't get the shit that I wanted to after two years. Broski, on the other hand, can get it anytime he wants. But that's usually the baby. They're spoiled as shit, get what they want, and then grow to be grown as kids. That still do whatever they want. You know what I mean? That ain't in my DNA. So, internal conflict. You got to know how you want to deal with things. That's why I don't ask for too much. More money, more problems. You ask for a job that paid more money. Now you got to put more time in. Now you're losing more sleep. Like, it's something for something. So that's what you find it out, feminine. Like, you got to be careful what you ask for. You got to be careful what you manifesting. You a whole superhero out here. So when you go to God for shit, best believe God going to come back with that. Quick as hell. Masculine, you got the Nine of Wands, the Wounded Warrior, man. Let's just look at your energy, bro. You got, you in pain. That heart full of fear. 
You stressed as a motherfucker. <laughs> here you are with the nine of wands. This is the wounded warrior. This is a toll. This pain is taking a toll on you. Shit gonna turn into a disease. I told you this ease in the mind turns to disease in the body. This pain gonna take a toll on you. This fear you in gonna take a toll on your life. You feeling you ain't got a lack of options. That's gonna put you in a desperate energy to do shit you don't want to do or manifest shit you don't want to manifest. The stress is gonna lead to death. You know what I'm saying? This is the I told you stress is the mental dis-ease you got. You think you're getting sick. You stress over the fact that you might inherit whatever hereditary disease your family got or whatever the fuck. Like you worried about something. And I told you, thoughts become things. Nine of Wands. Nine of Wands is like I said, a disease. You've been over here thinking you got diabetes because it running your family. You getting little headaches and shit. And you swear up and down you got the sugar. Only to find out you got the sugar. Cancer run rampant in your family. I don't believe in hereditary either. I mean, because, I don't know, me and my twin sisters, we're the only people in the family with a different bloodline from everybody else. We got the same, we got a different name from everybody else. I'm not saying we ain't family. You know, mom is our mom that connects us and shit, but when it comes to hereditary, when it comes to family genes and shit, like, I mean, you got to go to my dad's side for that. And I don't really know the guy too much. I don't know shit about his family. Nothing about my history and where I come from, and who the fuck he might be, and what the fuck his nationality is. He definitely makes him some shit. You look at me and tell, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> could be Indian, you know what I'm saying? I could be Spanish. I could be Cuban for uh, all we know. You know what I mean? I wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that plug to, uh, you know, the identity is. Uh, big problems with African Americans. You know, we we can't really trace ourselves back to the southern states we came from. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it starts in the mind and it manifests in the body. So, masculine, you gonna manifest something, something minor, something big. Could be something small as gout to something big as a fucking stroke. You know what I'm saying. Especially you masses. Masses, y'all healthy. Y'all be in the gym. Y'all be working out. Y'all be eating right. Like, y'all very physical. And, and care a lot about y'all physical presence and shit. But like I say, you can look good as a motherfucker, but it's, you, it's, it's still inside. You gotta fix it. And that's where you at. As far as the feminine though, you in regards to yourself personally, you got the king of pentacles. This could represent a karmic masculine. I don't know. Maybe the person you manifested. And you got a little conflict because you got to deal with them. This is the equivalent of, like I say, a sugar daddy. So you looking for sugar daddy ass feminists out here and shit. It's like, man, I'm just looking for somebody that can help me and manifest a few things that I want to manifest. And that's it. It's like you get that. But of course they want something in return. It's like Nate from Set It Off, nigga. I'm going to buy Nate, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you going to see Nate. Well, you already know what Nate needs. I mean, so as long as Nate get what he need, he won't get what you need. But you got to go through Nate to get it. It's a lot of chicks dealing with Nates. Nates could be hypothetically a lot of shit. You know? This could be a bank ready to give you a loan. You really wasn't looking for a loan. You was looking more like a, a, a credit or, or, or a, a donation or a grant of some sort. But it's like you know where to find the loans at. And you step your ass foot where the loans at. Disregarding the fact that it's hella free money out here. But if you're desperate or if you in need or whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like you know who to see if you need help. At least it's kind of help you looking for. But I'm pretty sure this person who you looking for help from or the assistance or whatever pinnacle you're trying to get around here. You know what come with karmic shit. Karmic shit you ain't really... Ready for it. karmic shit? You really don't want to define your divinity for. It. You know what I'm saying? Like, or it could just be something as small as like asking for help. Like you really don't need to. You can literally thug it out and make it through this week or make it through this month. Just doing what you usually do. But since you want extra shit, you know it's pinnacles. It's a person, place, or a thing that you can use more of. 
that you can should be stocked full of. You know what I'm saying? It's just certain things that you want that you gotta maintain. And it's look like you wanna see a karmic masculine for that, for feminines that do. Nine of Wands. This is being in the place to be, moving fast and furiously towards your divine direction or the energy of uh, acceleration. So like I said, I see a lot of feminines who manifested a karmic masculine to get certain pinnacles that they needed or to have certain pinnacles in place to survive or be comfortable or whatever, whatever you're getting from these karmic. But it's like the karmic want to rush it. Not really rush. It's like, hey, we've been dealing with each other for a lot of times. I don't mind helping you, but, you know, I kind of like you. You know, why don't we get serious? I want you to check me out. I mean, I swear lights been blinking all around me and shit. The spirits all around me. I'm seeing shadows all at the crib. A psychic friend of mine told me it's a specific spirit following me and shit. I mean, you know, hopefully they're divine. <laughs> He's like my, my grandpa or some grandma or somebody, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking to that when I get to the crib. Figure out why lights been tweaking all day around me. Today. Well, it started since last night. It's been starting since last night. I mean, damn it. As soon as I get to talk about the light, they want to dim up. Damn. Okay, that's the top light. Uh, one of my mental. Crazy. I ain't getting interrupted by the kids, but I see it's just an interruption nonetheless. Gotta get a new office light, that top light. Fucked up. <clears throat> Any rate. Just continue. Sorry about that delay. So. All right. Yeah, um, the karma you, you, you dealing with, it ain't got to be a relationship. It could just be a friend that you asking for a favor or a family member or a partner that you usually don't deal with, but you kind of need. It's like you need something. You need help. You're buying Nate. <laughs> it's like you would have buying and you hit up Nate and you kind of mad because you know what Nate need and you just feel like you should be past this energy. But like I said, you don't get something for nothing. You get something for something. And that's the lesson that you're learning. That nothing ain't free. And I see women do it all the time. You know, y'all think just because y'all are cute and y'all females that y'all are supposed to get the hookup. That cop's supposed to let y'all go automatically. Oh, he's a guy. They're going to let me go. I heard you be surprised how many times I heard that. That chicks think that just because they hot, that the cops don't let them go. They let me go all the time. I mean, but you expecting it. Like, you ain't gonna meet a gay cop or something. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, things, we all need things, but feminine is how you go about getting things. That really rub your masculine the wrong way. And let's parlay on that as far as the masculine in regards to you. Um, your masculine feels that you are very nine of pentacles when it comes to dealing with King of Pentacles in general. Nine of Pentacles is grooming. Good grooming, bad grooming, ugly grooming, you know. And I can I can agree on this. I'm a guy. I told you I'm feminine energy, but I ain't no female. You know what I'm saying? You females just be moving different. You know, what your masculine ain't feeling is how you attach yourself to King of Pentacles when you need shit. Not a big fear of mine, but something I gotta take into consideration. Like I say, I'm not a wealthy man. I'm blessed and wealthy in knowledge, wealthy in wisdom. 
wealthy in spirit and health and shit. You know what I mean? But as far as like pinnacles, as far as like bread, as far as like a nigga's net worth and shit, you know, I'm still local. Put it like that. You know what I mean? Um, I know women need shit. I got a twin sister. I remember us being in college, our, our what, sophomore year in college, right before we dropped out, because we didn't have no money to stay. Because we didn't have nobody, we didn't have no plan or no savings for shit, like, you know. <clears throat> My sister, I remember I went to her dorm and shit. She was mad, crying, heated about little shit. I'm a guy, so the shit she was tripping over, I couldn't relate. She like, nigga, I need to be proactive, bro. Like, my acne blowing out of proportion. I thought I handled this shit in motherfucking high school. I come here, and I'm fucked. Like, I ain't got no money. We ain't had no meal plan. We ain't had no bread. First time college students at Tennessee State University and shit. My sister, man, this is, this is looking her eye, bro. The looking her eye told me she would, nigga, she kind of desperate, bro. She'll do anything to get about this little jam she in. She needed shit. Like, Facial moisturizer and shit for the acne, proactive and shit, preserving her sexy. Nigga, she needed tampons and shit, bro. Makeup, girl shit. Like, I'm a dude. Dudes, we fucking low maintenance. So, uh, you know, I'm looking like, yo, you tripping. You don't need all that. She looked at me like, I don't need. Oh, you tripping. You know, like, the, I ain't gonna tell you what she did next, but she just kind of went in a different direction. To make sure that she never puts herself in that situation again. A direction I don't necessarily approve of. But I mean. Women need shit. Something I'm starting to see. Y'all need y'all hair done. Y'all need y'all nails done. Y'all need shit. Half the shit y'all think y'all need are accessories. They ain't really necessities in my personal opinion. But somebody convinced y'all that these accessories are necessities. I taught myself how to cut my own hair because I ain't got $80 a month to be paying for no fucking haircut. I need two haircuts a month. My shit grow kind of quick. You know what I mean? I can't afford no girlfriend, nigga. At least on my side, at least what I got going on. So I wouldn't even be in a relationship for my chick who I'm supposed to be dealing with to find another karmic masculine to get the shit that I can't give her or won't. Like I said, we ain't talk about sex or dick or nothing like that. I got that for days. We ain't talking about, like, a love and affection, tender love and care, attentiveness, you know what I'm saying? Like, resources and shit, I got that. I just ain't got, you know, that that that, that money, that moolah, that guac, that gouda, at least the shit you used to. I seen some meme the other day, they just did questions. Would you marry a guy who works a nine-to-five and makes six, fig six figures? No. It was like, would you... Go out with a guy that has a good nine to five job, or would you date a drug dealer? Guess what answer never came up? The nigga with the nine to five. They didn't even ask what kind of nine to five. Oh, is he a banker? Is he, you know, is he a stocks, stocks, you know, is he in stocks or some shit? Like, you know, they ain't even ask questions. They just heard drug dealer, drug dealer, drug dealer, drug dealer. About the tenth drug dealer, I'm just like, it's the future of America. This is the future woman of America, man. Future mothers of the fucking children that's gonna pop up. Like, damn. Like, even chicks who don't even do drugs, drug dealer. Like I say, <laughs> I understand. My master said a lot. At least what the fuck women be on. Muslims come at y'all a certain way. I don't agree with them. Just the superiority complex. They think that men is just better than women. Some. Foreign religions, the children are more important than the woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, the woman don't even have equal rights. The woman ain't even looked at as equal. Like, I don't agree with that shit. But I, I do see why they do the shit that they do. Why they keep the women clothed up. Why they kind of dominate pretty much every aspect of the feminist life. So she ain't really out here like the American woman. And like I said, I ain't really feeling American females. At least they mentality and the shit that they on. So I see why niggas really go to Africa or... Philippines or, you know what I mean, Taiwan, nigga, China, and go buy a bra, Russia, go get a chick to bring over here. You know what I mean? Like, not all women are thirsty. 
uh, niche it in a way to where they'll deal with people they don't even like to maintain the shit that they think they need. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not writing all y'all off, but I am saying that a lot of women do a lot of juvenile shit. Especially the non-accountability factor. That's the biggest thing I can't deal with with females. And like I say, just because you got some titties and some ovaries, you think you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Or I got to do everything you want me to do. Like, no. <laughs> I'm trying to catch a sandwich quick on your ass and really tell you about yourself. Because I don't give a fuck. Tell you, nigga, uh, tell white lies to a motherfucking chick all day. Don't even like her. Don't even want her. Just want her for certain shit. It's just how women are gullible to deal with drug dealers over a nigga with nine to five. I'm seeing this as equal as not me, but the average guy. They prefer the little side bitch who got the best head over the bitch that they dating who probably don't give head at all. They ain't gonna leave that girl because she a good girl and a provider and maybe a giver or it's a pinnacle, something they getting out the deal. But they wish that they main chick and fuck like they side chick. Just like the chick who got a main guy who ain't got that bread, go fuck with her side chick, dude, with money. Like I say, it's all about, what do you call that word? Uh, like I say, everybody getting whatever it is that they can get out of here. And that's really what's wrong with marriage. What's wrong with relationships. What's wrong with the world today. Everybody compensating for things. Wrapping this up, feminine, you regards to the masculine energy, you got the six of cups. This is the sauce. This is the steeds. This is the essence. This is what makes you you. Like I said, at the end of the day, female, y'all sitting on something that every nigga want. Period. You do have an ATM between your legs. You do got a motherfucking Powerball lottery ticket between your loins. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I say, pussy go far. Dick ain't never went that far. Dick don't go that far at all. You can literally have a big ass dick, Joe, but that shit still ain't gonna go for. And this chick can be an ugly gorilla, gorilla looking chick. I mean, she can be hideous, you know what I'm saying? But she still got one up on a porn star with the biggest dick. You know what I'm saying? Pussy go far. Very far. You have an act can take you far. You have an act can kind of set you up and put you in a nice, decent demo and let you gay. And then, you know, a man can kind of reap the benefits of how women is reaping benefits out here. You know what I'm saying? But that's definitely going towards a feminine energy. So saying all that to say this, feminine, you good to go. Like, you don't need nothing more than what you got. You know, all you gonna learn going to people who you don't need for shit you think you need is knowing that it's, it's the payback. Ain't nothing free. You think a motherfucker just gonna hook you up just cause? You think the cops just gonna let you go just cause? You think that men's supposed to act a certain way just cause? That's delusion. Like, you ain't even have to put yourself in this position. You ain't even have to go holler at Nate. You ain't even have to do half the stuff you do, but you're doing it, which makes it a little bit juvenile. And that's what the fuck the masculine don't like is the way you go about dealing with certain karmics to kind of compensate from what you can't get with your masculine. Or maybe your masculine just insecure as hell and sees you with, sees the type of former dudes you dealt with and is kind of intimidated by that too. Feminine, you got, you good enough. You straight enough. Have more faith in God. You know what I mean? Go to God for shit. Don't go to Nate for nothing. Don't go to dudes for, especially dudes you don't even want to deal with, or people you don't want to deal with, or friends you don't want to deal with, or family you don't want to deal with. You ain't got to deal with them. You can literally get everything you need to succeed, survive, and thrive through yourself. You already got it in you. And it's cups. And ain't no pinnacles. I told you, pinnacles don't mean shit. What you're doing or what you've done means something, not what you have or what you think you need. Masculine, you and to yourself, you got the six of swords. This is things just coming together. It's like two, a zipper coming together, a escalator, a elevator. You know, you on a bike and you going downhill, you ain't got a paddle no more. You on a stream in a boat to where you ain't got a paddle that much. You know what I'm saying? It's just something that's moving effortless and frequent. What's in your life that's moving effortless and frequent? Six of Wands, a certain win, victory, or celebration. This is your own victory, win, or celebration. So it's something you wanted to line up in your life. 
and buy this thing coming together. This could be, like I say, these what I see with a lot of masses. They working on something, hoping that they get some payback from it. They are networking and connecting with people, hoping to get a specific thing. He's with my masculine. I see him every time he get the networking and being buddy buddy with motherfuckers, especially people he really don't know. It's because of the paper chase or the hustle he got going on. You know what I'm saying? My twin is very social but non-social. He goes to every fucking function and shit, but he working really. He hustling. He a hustler at heart. That's what the nigga do. He a hustler, rain, sleet, snow. No matter what hustle it is, he gonna hustle that shit because that's just what he do. Hustle. Russell Russell over here, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, I'm pretty sure it's draining on him. All this fake smiling, all the fake laughs, all the fake poses and the fake pictures he's dealing with people he probably don't even like dealing with, you know what I mean? It's draining being non-authentic. And that shit is taking its toll on him. Like I say, it'd be best if shit just clicked to him. He ain't got to hustle. He just kind of got a nice network of people that's going to fuck with them off the strength. It's like getting your clientele up to a point to where you don't even need to look for clientele no more. But it gets to a point to, in order to expand your business, you need to teach somebody what you're doing so you can leave from what you're doing, have somebody else do it to go do something else, like go get more money. You know what I'm saying? Master just hoping something works out to kind of alleviate a little stress that he's under. So this is like a government program. He's trying to get that's gonna help him out, or uh, a grant, or uh, you know, uh, funds, or trying to get support, or trying to get donations, or trying to get something going. You know, you're trying to get something going, and it's gonna get moving. But it's like how the feminine learning once you manifest shit. Are you ready for it? Can you handle it? Future final role wrapping this up. Feminine going to the future. You got the ten of cups. This is happiness. Happiness. Uh, or emotional contentment. Or emotional fulfillment. This happiness has a lot to do, Ace of Swords, with ascension. It's like I was just saying, you ain't gotta go to Nate for shit. Jada, you know what I mean? Like, ascension. Ascension essentially is just going up. What's up, goddess? What's up? What's up, the infinite? You know, when you go up, you find strength, power, authority, dominion, courage, whatever you need. Hey, for anything you need to succeed, survive, and thrive, you'll find that within your own self. And that should make you happy. The fact you ain't got to go outside yourself for happiness. That you ain't got to go outside yourself for help. That you ain't got to go outside yourself for shit. You don't need to. You know what I'm saying? Only karmics need other karmics. Only karmics need people. Only karmics are really codependent. The only codependent energy I really see with amongst the vines are in our own Tomb Flame demo. Other than that, I don't see too many divines codependent on too many karmics unless it's that one karmic who you really love, who you really adore, who you truly respect and shit, but it's like you don't fuck with them the way they fuck with you. And that's the issue. That's the problem. That's 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 the demo. So we'll turn on on the last card. Uh masculine. Going to the future, you got your life. This is something you've been pondering over for, I like, I would say, like, two months. For two months, you've been trying to figure out where, what direction to go with your life. Your life is shoes on your feet, clothes on your back, the comfortable beds you're sleeping on, your job, your car, your kids, your crib. God is in your life. Your flame is in your life. Life is the things that you have and how you view your own life. Life is what you think it is, what you feel it is. You know what I mean? So, masculine. Y'all really going to the future and really trying to get a grasp of what you really want in your life. Who you really want in your life. What you really want out of your life. You're really trying to see your future. That's something you never really did was sit the fuck down and plan you want your life to be in the next five, ten years. Who you want in it the next five, ten years. Like, what you want to be doing in the next five, ten years. It's time to plan ahead. Your life. Your life. It's time to figure out exactly what you want in life. At least by knowing what you want, you can go get that shit. At least knowing who you want in your life, you can get rid of the people you don't want in and now. Your life. 
More smoke on your life, masculine. You got the five of cups. This is loneliness. Or uh, emotional isolation or just being in a class by yourself. Another reason why you're thinking a lot about your life is because you're by yourself. One thing I could say, person who's never been in a motherfucking relationship, person who's been by himself the majority of his life, I ain't got time to think about nothing but my life. I ain't got time to think about shit but my future. I ain't got time to think about nothing but my past, but my purpose, but God. Like, Cause I ain't distracted with another person. I ain't distracted with shorties. I ain't distracted with being like a hobosexual. Hobosexual, like a person who ain't got no place to stay, who only in a relationship to stay with somebody. Or a person who's super codependent, who can't make a move without another person, who has to have another income or another person or another body next to them to sleep at night. Like, like I say, how do you heal yourself, feminine? You deal with yourself. You be by yourself to really get this internal conflict shit down pat. Masculine, you usually a learner. But it's like going to the future, you starting to see that you've been alone your whole life. You're looking for a change all across the board, even in a relationship area. And that's the message that I got. Stay tuned for more. Deuces.